Well, I had to do it. I got a different chair now. So this makes it, what, the third chair? Let's see if we can get a fourth. Hello and welcome to another special episode of Japan at War. So before I made the YouTube channel, this Japan at War was, and still is, on Instagram. I've posted some 400 pictures on there, mostly of actual suits of armor. So I thought it'd be fun to go through and talk about five of the most beautiful suits of Japanese armor I've seen. Well, in my opinion. Now for warning. I don't know everything there is to know about these pieces, so bear with me. And I'm also not going to put these in any particular order as I don't feel like spending hours debating myself about which is better. So anyway, let's begin. The first one we're going to talk about is this. One of the most impressive Namban Gosoku pieces I've seen. So what is Namban Gosoku? Well, to put it simply, it's armor that combines elements outside of native Japan. For this one, as we can see, the dough is, is a European kuros, and the helmet bowl is also European. It seems to be a Dutch-style kabase, but obviously has quite a few Japanese elements made into it. I'd say it's most likely a Japanese copy and not made in Europe for this reason. The kuros, though, was apparently made in Europe, but I have no idea which country. Leave your guess down below. Seriously though, there's so much that I could say about this piece. It's absolutely stunning, and it's incredibly unique. I mean, just look at the kusaziri. The embossed leather is pretty rare for Japanese armor, and I love that it's connected to the kuros with the cloth and chainmail. Plus, the numerous tassels is, well, pretty fancy. And I'm sure you've noticed all the imagery all over it. Seriously, this is an incredibly gorgeous piece of art. Okay, so the next one you might have actually seen before. Absolutely gorgeous, that's not even debatable. And if it didn't make this list, well, I would be deceiving you. I'm of course talking about the red laced Oyoroi, supposedly donated to the Kasuga Taisha Shrine in Nara by the legendary samurai Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Now, if this was worn in battle, I guarantee that all the brass work was added on later. It wouldn't have been worn like this in battle. But still, this is an incredibly beautiful piece of art. Okay, so what pops out at me the most? When I see this piece, well, I mean, probably those beautiful osore, which is the giant shoulder protectors. The work that goes into these can actually be quite staggering. And when you look at the brass work, I mean, the bamboo, the, the, the tiger, it's stunning, especially set against that bright red silk lace. Another thing that jumps out, and I feel that often gets overlooked, is the igawa, which is the stenciled leather on the front of the dough. Oh, I also wanted to point out that this type of armor is predominantly a heavy cavalryman's armor from the Heian period through the Kamakura period. The samurai were horse archers first, and this style was meant specifically for that, and it was not lightweight. Most of these actually weighed anywhere between 45 to 60 pounds, sometimes even more. What's really impressive about this suit in particular is if I'm not mistaken, Yoshitsune was actually only about five foot two. So this piece is actually not as big as you'd think, but it definitely gives a larger than life appearance. And I just love that. Okay, next is this eye-catching piece. If you've ever looked on my desk during my Engine War series, you've probably noticed I have a book open and this piece is actually on it. So this was worn by my favorite samurai, Kato Kiyomasa, before the Imjin War campaigns. And it's often overlooked in favor of his other kit, 
with the famous Iboshi helmet. So what do I love about this set so much? Well, obviously there's a lot going on. I'd say that the Karahara Nugi Do is what pops out the most to people. It's meant to give the impression of an emaciated monk. What's incredible is how the maker was able to do the hammer work, but also the lace work that was done to imitate a monk's robes. Speaking of which, check out the kabuto. Notice the hair on top? Also take notice of the visor plate meant to give the impression of eyebrows. Okay, another thing that I think often gets overlooked is the lacquer work. Although it's not really lacquer, although it also kind of is from my understanding. Either way, it's called kimpaku, which is a type of gold leaf, and I'd wager it's 22 carats, as that's the most common that I've seen on the web when it comes to this technique. This actually adds to the whole theme of the monk too, because kimpaku was applied to temples, Buddhist altars and statues, and well, so on. Last thing to notice is the color that they put in the lace. Some people aren't a big fan of these types of colors, but I am. And for these reasons, I decided that this piece just had to be on this list. All right. This one makes me a little sad because I only have one picture of this piece and a woodblock print of the owner wearing it. And if any of you have any more pics of it, please message me on Instagram. Anyway, check this out. Pretty much the entire piece of armor has been covered in hand silk embroidery. The piece itself was never intended for combat, but the scales and plates underneath the silk is all metal, and it definitely would be able to protect you in combat. The owner just wouldn't want to because of the embroidery, and who can blame him? This would be way too much work to repair, and the cleaning alone would be a nightmare. Speaking of the owner, let's go ahead and take a look at that woodblock print. You know, let's do it now. So I do actually have some information on this guy because of an awesome Instagram user known as Akinorza. Check her out if you're into Japanese horse archery. It's actually a really great page. Anyway, his name was Nanbu Shigenobu, and he was the third daimyo of the Morioka domain in northern Japan, and the 29th hereditary leader of the Nambu clan. Let's take just one more look at the piece, though, before we move on. It's absolutely amazing, and I've honestly just never seen another piece like it. Okay, so I'd like to apologize ahead of time on this last one because, well, the pictures aren't the best quality, but the armor itself is amazing. A full set just covered in peacock feathers. Now, I'm not sure how this is done, but it's just so freaking cool. By itself, it's actually a rather common style of armor, and it really is relying on the feathers to stand out. But, I mean, does it need anything else? You can't say that's not impressive. I mean, just take a look at the chest plate of this set. Tell me that's not amazing how the craftsman was able to line up all the feathers in a row. You can't. I mean, don't even try. The maker was actually able to do the same thing for the sode, but in my personal opinion, it's the helmet that really catches my eye. First off, it's a, I'm a big fan of Eboshi style helmets and I should have a regular one on the screen. But yes, I love the shape, and I love how the feathers conform to the shape. What I also love is the stenciled leather on the brim. And even though, actually, you know what, let's see if we can get different angles up on the screen. Okay, like I was saying, even though it's very worn, the shikuro, or neck guard, was done in kimpaku as well. And I just, oh man, I love it. Anyways, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. And in the comments section, tell me which of these five was your favorite. And actually, you know what? Write to me down below to tell me which one you liked the least. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.